Hi, it's Mark Coopersmith. And in my ongoing series of conversations with entrepreneurs, investors, deal makers, kind of all things entrepreneurial, it's a real pleasure for me today to spend some time with Jed Katz, who is the managing director at Javelin Venture Partners. Jed, thanks for spending some time with us, with me. Of course, happy to. Thanks, Mark. So in this conversation, uh, Jed, you're on fund number five, average fund size, 100 to $125 million. You invest in um, kind of late seed, early A stage companies. Yes. Kind of the quick overview, what did I miss? Uh, funds, uh, historically, have been around 125 million. We invest anywhere from one to five million on average, I'd say. And uh, we tend to be the first institution to come in. So the first venture firm to take board seats and, and get deeply involved and help you with your initial recruiting and strategy and setting yourself up for a successful future round of funding. One of the things that I love, and, and you and I have discussed this before too, is that uh, you and Noah and the other you know, kind of principals at, at your firm have been entrepreneurs. You've, you've walked the, the miles in the entrepreneur's you know, shoes. Uh, so getting engaged at this time allows you to really help provide those insights, the patterns of success and failure, things like that. Kind of, what else, yeah. kind of, how does that play for you guys? It plays in a variety of ways. Um, the first thing is we've been in their shoes. So we, we understand the stress they're going through and how hard it is to do a startup. We understand the, how important the early recruiting is, how uh, important it is to um, you know, hear from your customers and find product market fit and uh, set yourself up for, for the funding rounds you're gonna need so you don't run out of cash. Uh, but most importantly, we're there to just be productive with you and to brainstorm and solve problems and, and uh, help help be a partner and build a business with you. Um, the last thing we want to do is be a distraction or bring drama to the table. Uh, we just want to be the ones that you feel very comfortable with. And we talk about all aspects of the business with. Yeah. You have a reputation, you personally and your firm has a reputation of being very founder friendly, which is um, something which I'm sure you don't take for granted and something that you work at. Uh, it's extremely important to us. And um, we try to reinforce that with, with everything we do. So it's, it's great to hear that, uh, that you've heard that. <laughs> well, and, and I've been on the other side too, uh, both as an entrepreneur where sometimes, you know, sometimes when you raise funding, you think you're raising it from the right folks and they don't turn out to be quite as aligned as you might think, or there are some of these boardroom uh, dramas that, catch you off guard, whether maybe they have alternative motivations or they're a strategic investor and where they're trying to go isn't aligned with where you think you need to go. So being founder yeah. friendly is really important. And actually, let me start there. When you pick an investor as entrepreneurs, when you pick an investor, because we get choices too, when I say we, entrepreneurs have choices in who they accept money from, just like yeah. investors have choices in who they invest in, what should you look for? Absolutely. So we have a whole series of criteria and for our fund sectors actually at the bottom of that list, believe it or not, uh, in no particular order, obviously the team is super important. Is this an entrepreneur we want to work with and we're going to have a great back and forth with all the time. The relationship is going to be strong. We're going to have self-respect and a lot of intellectual honesty with each other. Right. Um, we're looking for companies that are capable of explosive growth, multi-billion dollar markets, uh, we have some visibility into how they would get to hundred million in revenue in a reasonable amount of time. They, we feel the founding team, especially the CEO is going to be a good recruiter is going to be a good money raiser for future rounds, uh, can handle a, a sophisticated biz dev partnership with somebody, um, can do all the things that you need to tactically do when you're building a startup, but also can step back and see the whole chessboard. Right. Um, Capital efficiency is important to us. Scalability is very important to us. Building something that's hard to do and hard to compete with. And if you pass a certain threshold, you've kind of won the war and then it's fighting all the battles. Uh, the, you know, these things are, are hard to find. Um, we look at sector in a different kind of way. There are sectors where we're good at and we have expertise in, or we've done startups in, or we've, you know, ha our network can be very helpful in. Um, there are things that we, we don't have expertise and we, we stay away from um, or things that are just capital intensive. You know, we, we don't typically do life science. Right. We don't typically do um, uh, expensive hardware. Um, 
you know, uh, but other than are, that, we try to let me break in. There are firms yeah. that do that focus on life science. Sure. There are firms that focus on hardware. And obviously, as entrepreneurs, okay. they need to understand, OK, let me make sure I'm pitching to somebody who invest in my sector, who understands what I'm trying to do, who understands the landscape, right? Yeah, you'd be surprised how many incoming um, uh, requests we get for, for meetings on, on sectors we was, have never touched and, and, and wouldn't touch. And you know, clearly they, they didn't look at our website or study our portfolio. Right. Um, and so they're, you know, I don't, I'm not sure why they're reaching out. Uh, but they're, well, they're maybe they maybe they heard you were founder friendly and thought that they would sure. you would be they would be the exception and that, that you would be the, the first investment in a life sciences or medical device company. Maybe, but you know, look, I think people that are raising venture should try to figure out what funds are most appropriate for them. Yeah, right. Who 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 does invest in that type of thing? What, what stage does that fund invest in? Is it is it the right stage for you? And are there partners there that are going to um, love what you're doing? And, and, and want to work on it. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. All right, so let's turn that around. So that's what you look for in a venture. In a venture. The, yep. the right sector, you're relatively sector agnostic, but there are just some sectors yep. you don't invest in. Don't approach a firm that has no expertise or experience in your sector, right? This is a key piece of advice. What other advice would you give turning that conversation around, because you've been on both sides, to an entrepreneur as far as the, the types of, of funds and, entre and, and ones they should, funds and investors they should approach. And you gave us yep. one or two. Take a look at the website. Yeah. Make sure that we're investing in that sector. <laughs> what are some other things that we might look for? I think um, you want to be meaningful to the fund. So you want to um, make sure that whatever they would invest in your company is a stake that's important to them and they, they really want to see you succeed. I always um, discourage entrepreneurs from taking a small amount of money from a giant fund, because that's really just a free option for the giant fund right. to figure out if they want to write a bigger check later. But, you know, it, it really, there's, you can get to know them without having them be an investor. And if they don't end up investing, it's really poor signaling for everybody else. So I don't think that's a, a, the best thing to do. Um, but the biggest thing is see if there's a, a great fit with a particular partner, whoever would, would join the board if, if that fund invested. And, um, you know, does that partner have both an expertise that can be helpful or, or a, a, a big interest in what you're doing? Uh, and will they save proper reserves for you? And um, can they help you on some uh, strategic initiatives in the beginning to kind of kickstart your, your, your business? Um, you know, you want to treat every fundraising meeting like free consulting, because at the right. very least, even if they say no, you just talk to somebody for an hour or more about your business and they're going to have some great ideas and maybe some great contacts. Maybe they have a, some, you know, a recruit for you. Get help from every meeting. Get help from every meeting. All right. So you've just given several really good pieces of advice. Let me poke on those just a touch. Yeah. Um, let's say that I'm a, an entrepreneur. I'm approaching you and you're going to become, as you said, find that partner that advocates for you. Find that yep. partner that you have a good relationship with. Is that a key piece of advice? I'm approaching a well, number of firms. How do I want to establish, how do I socialize my, oh, one other thing you said earlier, you don't have to take money from a big fund to get to know them. So there's a few yep. things that are in there. How do you socialize okay. an idea? How do you create relationships? How do you right. determine how to create those personal connections? I'll add one more to those of how do you, how do you get in? How do you get the How do you get in? Yeah, to begin with, yeah. perfect. So Take what I would do is try and talk to as many entrepreneurs as you can and get to know, do background checks basically on these funds, on, on the partners of the funds too, and figure out which funds make sense to approach and which partner makes sense to approach. The funds are seeing 20, 30, whatever it is, companies during the week, and they're going to talk about all of them on, on Monday in their partners meeting. And you want to be the one that you have some champion in the room that's, that, that's banging his fist on the table saying, we have to do this deal because I was so impressed by this founder and I love this idea. And so finding that champion is key. Um, these are some of the most networked people in, in the world. And so to the extent that you can uh, put in not even that much effort to find other founders, other entrepreneurs that know the partners and do some research on the fund you're about to approach makes all the difference. So how do uh, you, you get a do warm that? Intro. Do you just look up on LinkedIn? Do you take a look at the portfolio companies and reach out to them? What do you do? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, the portfolio company is a great way to do it. 
that's a great place to start because typically they're going to have, you know, 40, 50, 60, 70 portfolio companies, right? And each one has two or three founders or, uh, you know, all these exec teams that might have interacted with, with the partners. And uh, start figuring out who you know or who's, you know, second hand or a second uh, level connection, do you know? And, and just start getting intros to so start doing a background checks. It's really not that hard. You can also, um, you know, these people are out there, I would, you know, pre-COVID when we used to do uh, <laughs> panels and all that stuff. Yeah. You know, it, it's pretty easy to meet people and, and right. just start a relationship. Um, the other way you can do it is, is um, you know, meet people more casually long before you're ready to pitch them. And just tell them what you're thinking about and what you're going to do and what you, the milestones you expect to hit before you come in. And then if you've hit those milestones, by the time you reach out again, you can remind them, remember I said I was going to do this? Well, I did. Now I'd love to tell you kind of where we go from here. And it's just a great way to come in. So in the current environment where some of that direct personal interaction doesn't take place in, this, in the same way, it maybe is a little bit more challenging, but maybe not. So let, let's say that I'm not quite ready for funding, but yep. I know that I want to talk to you at Javelin maybe in six months. So a couple of thoughts. Yep. How do I reach out to you if I don't have a direct connection, if I know I can't go up and chat with you after you give a talk at, at some event? And yep. what do I do to begin to create a relationship that you don't say no to from the very beginning? Yeah, so the best way is to get some type of warm referral from somebody that I've interacted with in the last 20 years, and right. there's a lot of them. Well, so, so I don't think that's actually that hard. This, right? Anybody watching this would say, oh, Mark knows Jed, for example. There you go. And Reach out to Mark. Mark. Mark, And Mark will give me a recommendation. You might actually read that email, right? Well, for sure. Yeah. I mean, how could I not read an email from Mark? Right. But, uh, uh, you know, so I would, I would take that conversation and um, – you know, I'm going to give you our criteria in that conversation. I'm going to say, here are the things we're going to be looking for in six months when you come back. So and I'm going to give you some guidance. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't want it to be the tail wagging the dog. So if you agree, yep. if you agree with the guidance and, uh, and, you know, we can even debate it out. I want to hear how you, you know, take feedback and some you'll agree with, some you won't agree with, but whatever it is, I I'm, I'm telling you what's going to be most interesting to us. And so when you come back later, uh, remember those things and, and just kind of report back how you've done against them. Yeah, I mean, the, the perfect, it, it, if I say, what would you like to see from me? And six months from now I come back and I share with you none of that, chances are it's not gonna go very well. But you've actually- It goes given, badly. Yeah, yeah, it will go badly. It will go yeah. badly. But you've given me the opportunity to say, oh, you'd like to see how I'm making progress on product, how I'm making progress in markets, how I'm evolving my team or whatever it is. And in this particular market, this is something. And if I lead with those, chances are you're going to be nodding and leading in. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I mean, you're just the, you know, again, the, the odds go up. We pay more attention. We, we sit up straighter in our chair <laughs> when you come in that second time. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, 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 that's your chance at that point to, to wow us and, and become the thing we want to work on. Right, right. When, when um, a meeting ends and I hear you tell me, good luck, what have you just told me? Probably. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's probably a no, right? If yeah. it, the, the signs for, for yes are, here are the three things I want you to follow up and please send me this tomorrow and this tomorrow and I'd love to talk to one of your customers and, right. you know, I want to get to know you better. Those are the signals. They're, they're pretty obvious. You know, we're, some funds are different, but we like to, um, if it's a no, we're going to tell you immediately. You know, we may even tell you in the meeting, but um, we're going to tell you uh, super fast. So there's no confusion at all. The last thing I want to do is waste, waste your time. Um, if it's something we're interested in, I want you to get to know me just as much as I want to get to know you. So it's, it, it then starts a, um, a time period of, uh, further diligence into your company and your idea and your team, but also getting to know each other and, and then trying to um, put forth how we can help you and, and what kind of people we are and giving you our references. And, you know, it's, uh, it's a math making process. Yeah. So there, there are some firms that'll be a little bit more opaque about a yes or a maybe or a no. So for me, you know, good luck is typically a no. Um, if you say, these are the three things I'd like to see from you tomorrow or as soon as possible, we're really interested. That's clearly an expression of interest. And then there's probably a, a spectrum of warmth to hot 
And you're probably pretty good at signaling that too. I think with, with most funds, you can tell by the body language alone yeah. what their interest level is. And, um, you know, I think you need to treat every meeting as if it's two o'clock right after lunch. Right. Everybody's pretty tired. And your job is to get them to perk up and, right. and, and start to see the vision and get excited about it. So one of the things that, especially as I teach entrepreneurship, there's a number of, you know, we talk about kind of the usual things. We talk about customer discovery and rapid prototyping and how to assess early product market fit and things like that. But when it comes to how firms, entrepreneurs engage with you, there's some of those early interactions we've just talked about. And then there's the oh. meeting, the pitch. And oh. there are some pretty typical templates that are out there for the types of things that most venture capitalists like to see. Yep. What, what's your attitude towards, is that, is that generally what you're expecting to see? Is there a typical order? Is there something kind of that, that you look for when an entrepreneur comes in and sits down with you and you say you have half an hour? Yeah, um, there's a bunch of things. So we actually like to go through a deck, a short deck, mm -hmm. just to um, see the product. We want the product demo. We want to see uh, what their plan is, who their team is, who their competitors are. We want to see that they've thought these things out. Um, but there's a bunch of dynamics happening in that room, right. right? You have your champion who you're trying to get super excited about your business. So he'll fight for it on Monday morning. You have the least likely partner to like it for whatever reason, their body language is wrong. They're not so into the sector. I don't know what it is. And your, 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 your job is to try and convince them that, yeah, this is something that could have a huge return. Right. There's the associate who believe it or not, has a lot more power than you think, right? Because they're, usually much younger, you know, maybe they're a, a, a millennial who, who uses all this stuff personally. And, and um, uh, you know, you, their opinion is going to mean a lot to the partners as they, as they debate this. Um, and then there's all the other stuff you're, you're competing against, all the other companies that have come in recently and are telling their story with their team. And, you know, your job is to get yourself to the top of that list because you're the entrepreneur and you're, and then this is, this is the idea that you want this group to work on. Right. It's, there's a lot of dynamics going on at once. Um, but forget all that for a second. Just have a great time. Yeah. Just don't be too nervous. Go in there. I mean, this is your baby that you're building and just like show how much you love doing this and how excited you are about this opportunity and, and how much you've thought through the size of it and the competitive advantages you're going to have and who you want to target to recruit and the stuff you don't know, the stuff you need help with and the, you know, all the things that you're going to want to um, get from your board member along the years and, and, you know, just make it a really two-sided dynamic conversation. And you, you know, that's, that's going to be a great start. Yeah. So, so a couple of things that come out of that, first of all, is, as you and I know, even in a conversation like this, you know, if, if we're passionate, if we're having a good time, chances are, I hope, those of you who are watching this, it's more engaging. You kind of want that same thing at a pitch meeting, right? If, if I'm passionate about what I'm doing, if I know what I'm talking about, you're just going to be more interested. It might be your 30th meeting in the last two weeks. Right. But look, sometimes it takes, I mean, look, one of our, our, our very biggest companies met with 40 firms and and we were the one that said yes and 39 said no yeah and it's now a uh you know well above a billion dollar valuation well and the and, good news about that is by then you're super comfortable with all your material i mean the good news yeah, about right. is, by the way never go yeah. here's one piece of advice i have never take the one firm that you want the most should not be your first meeting you should try yeah. your deck out on a couple of firms that you don't think are a great fit not yeah. a terrible fit but that's my advice i, I know jed it may not you might not appreciate that because you don't want people to necessarily try things out but uh -huh. you go no i do appreciate that out. um we, we tell our, all of our portfolio companies the same thing when they're raising their series B's and C's. Uh, you got to get really good at it. And the first couple of times you do it, you're going to screw it up. You know, you're, for whatever reason, you're, you're not going to read the room right. You're going to focus on the wrong thing. You're going to run out of time. You know, something's going to happen. Right. Just get better and better at it. And then, and then approach your top three firms after that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so, it's going to so be better. Get a couple of dry runs in, in front of first. And by the way, if one of them says we're in, even better right? You get a double bonus. The other thing, um, one of the other things that, that I sometimes suggest is while most pitch decks have a normal cadence to them and they cover the things you talked about, the problem, the solution, the competition, the product, your go-to-market strategy, your team, 
a little bit about how big the opportunity is, how you're going to use the money, those types of things. Um, I often suggest that it's fine for me as the entrepreneur to call you and say, when I meet with your part, you and your partners, what two or three things do you think I should really focus on? So it lets me address the concerns that you might have or the opportunities that you share. And then there's two parts to that. One is the opportunity. What should I focus on? The other is what are going to be the big concerns? You know, right. what are you guys going to be most worried about? Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's all kinds them? of, um, you know, you got to cover those things in the meeting or else you're yep. probably not going to do well on Monday. Um, you know, there's mistakes people make. Like I, I usually don't like the team slide in, in the very beginning. I like to have more context on what the business is before I see the team to make yep. sure it's the right team for, for that business. Um, but some people start with the team and it takes them, 20 minutes to go through all the bios and it's interesting we're getting to know a lot about the people but they've they've now spent half their time and we don't even know what business they're doing right so you got it you got to allocate your time really carefully you're not going to cover everything in the first meeting okay your job is to get a second meeting wait wait That's your my job. job is not to have you write a check at the end of that first no, meeting <laughs> it is not right it is not uh, very rarely does that happen but um your job is to get the group excited to want to dig in. And then you can get into all the details. Right? So cover the big things, get them excited about the big things and then cover the risks, the reasons they might say no to you right off the bat and yeah. try and cross those off. Yeah. Fantastic. So as we wrap things up, are there one or two things that we haven't covered that you would say to entrepreneurs that these are the things that the advice you would give them if they came to pitch you or whomever it is that they would be seeking to raise funds from or partner with on a broader basis? Yeah, I think you, you need to tell a big enough story and you need to be convincing that it's achievable, yeah. that you're the right. I mean, you don't know the number of times um, the Uber concept was pitched before Uber itself got funded. There were a lot of people trying to do the same thing, but they weren't the right person for it or the right team, or they didn't have the right plan. And so they, they, it didn't work. Either they didn't get funded or it failed. And, um, you know, you got to be convincing that it's the, the opportunity is big enough and you're the right group to do it. And, and that it's going to be a great partnership. Yeah. And if you can accomplish those things, um, then it's just a question of figuring out why they would say no and trying to deal with those concerns uh, and making sure they come out, right? The last thing you want is for the concerns to never really come up and, you know, you get turned down and you don't even know why. Right. Cover it. Anticipate the reasons they might say no and have a really good discussion about those things. And you typically have somebody inside the firm, whether it's the associate or if you've gotten up to a partner that is your champion that is going to be able to coach you on that a little bit. You should listen really carefully, both explicitly and a bit between the lines for those cues, right? Because those will typically be there. Um, it, it, you know, I've seen it work both ways. So during the meeting, well, there's definitely uh, the preparation for the meeting, but during the meeting itself, a lot of times the, you know, the champion will, will guide some of it, but then sit back for some of it right. and let, let his partners ask their questions, ask their concerns and, and, and see how the entrepreneur does in, in that discussion. Um, when the entrepreneur is not in the room is when the champion will be banging their fist more. Yeah. And, and no, I, and I agree with you. I think it, once you're in that room, you're there. The key thing though, is in advance of that meeting yep. as an entrepreneur, you should listen. If there are any cues or advice being given, take that advice. It will help I'd you. Say, get um, next meeting. I'd say it's a pretty small percentage of the companies that pitch that even ask that question before the first meeting of, you know, I'm coming in, I'm excited. Give me a little guidance of, of uh, you know, what your partners are gonna be looking for and what are, what are gonna be the, the big concern areas that you wanna make sure I cover. Right. That's extremely important. You should ask that every time before every meeting. Perfect, I think that's a great way to end. Jed, thanks for sharing your wisdom. Thanks for kind of sharing for the entrepreneurs that are watching this, what it's like on the other side of the table. The entrepreneurs are pitching. What is it you're receiving? Well, you've given us some insights into that and kind of where it goes from there. Much appreciated. This was a great conversation. Thanks for having me, Mark.